Coming in WordPress 6.5 is a groundbreaking feature, the block binding API, and it's all about binding and objectifying. But what does this really mean? Well, to me, it signifies a significant leap forward in bridging the gap between classic theme development and the dynamic capabilities of block theme development. So check this out. Now I've been using and developing with WordPress since the early noughties and out of the box it's always provided a solid foundation for web development. It comes with a database schema, includes user authorization, user roles and capabilities, post categories, tagging, and as a developer I've seen it used in incredibly creative ways. I've even utilized it creatively to exploit the way posts can be categorized and tagged to create product databases. However, the true power of WordPress development lies in the custom post metadata. Now this has emerged as a crucial tool for creating highly customized data-driven web sites in my opinion. Its roots can be tracked back to the early days of WordPress, but it wasn't until the platform's widespread success and the emergence of ecosystems like advanced custom fields that the true potential of custom metadata became apparent. WordPress uses custom metadata throughout the core in various places behind the scenes for all sorts of hidden functionality, but it's also used to attach additional information to posts, pages, and custom post types. Now, this flexibility paves the way for creating complex dynamic websites tailored for very specific needs. While page builders and Gutenberg blocks offer an alternative approach to content creation, custom metadata offers a level of granularity and flexibility that is still unmatched. And these days with the concept of Gutenberg and modern web development, we have binding and objectifying, but what does that mean? So binding refers to associating data or functionality with a specific element or event. Objectifying involves representing elements or components as objects in code. And in WordPress 6.5, we have the new block binding API. In today's WordPress ecosystem, this new concept of binding Binding and objectifying will now include custom metadata. This involves associating metadata with specific blocks within the WordPress block editor. And by doing so, developers and users can streamline the process of accessing and manipulating metadata. So how do you implement this? Well, let me show you. So I've put together a little mock site here, essentially a holiday vacation reservation booking platform for villas. I've set up uh, an archive page within my theme. Additionally, I've created a single page template, both specifically using a custom post type called Villa. And we'll need to define some custom meta fields as well. And I'll show you how to achieve that shortly. Now I won't go into the specifics of how I structured this or built this because my good friend, Jamie over at Poodle Press has his own channel where he teaches folks how to build sites using the block editor. Jamie, come say hello. Oh, hi Elliot. Hi everyone. Thanks for dropping by. Keep watching Elliot's channel. It's amazing, doing great work. See you soon, bye. Oh, thanks, Jamie. What a legend. And I'll leave a link to his brilliant channel in the description below. Great. Now let's talk about creating a custom post type. There are two main methods for doing this, using a plugin like Advanced Custom Fields or Custom Post Type UI, or taking the manual approach, which is what I'll be doing. I'll aim for a minimalist setup using as few arguments as necessary. Similarly, when it comes to adding custom fields, while plugins like Advanced Custom Fields offer convenience, I'll be demonstrating the manual method using a function called register meta. Now let's head over to the little plugin I've created and see what I've got set up so far. Now I've created a plugin called Vacation Villas. In the main file, it's a straightforward setup with a simple header and I've made sure to die if the WP include is not defined to ensure that the script can't be called directly, just a little security measure. Then I simply require two files, one for the custom post type and one for the custom metadata. Now taking a look at the custom post type file, you'll see what I've got set up. So I'm adding an action to the init hook with the callback function set to a priority of 10. Then create the function with some minimal arguments now, I wouldn't recommend doing this in the real world as you probably need more arguments to register a given post type, but that's not the premise for this video. I just wanted to show you the absolute minimum requirement for this to work. So now I'll call the register post type on my post type called Villa, along with passing the arguments. And that includes the label that will be used in the menu in the back end. And supports is what to include as editable in the back end when the post is being edited. I'm including the title, and the editor for content. And the important thing here is to include the custom fields. If you don't, we won't be able to see them in the UI when we're editing the custom post type. To ensure the custom post type shows up in the front end, you need to set the public parameter to true. Additionally, you should set the has archive to true so that you can use the archive template for your custom post types. Finally, setting the show in rest to true will allow the block editor to interact with the post types via the rest API. Now this is the bare minimum you need to make things work. So now let's dive into the metadata setup. And to do this, I'll establish another action hook, which will be triggered on the init hook again, vacation villas register meta. Now within this callback, I'll evoke the register meta function, which requires three parameters. Firstly, the object type, 
and this encompasses pages, posts, or custom post types, and that will be set to post. The meta key, which will be designated as vacation villas rated, followed by an arguments array. Now within this array, we'll define an object subtype, which will correspond to my custom post type of villa, and I'll configure it to display in the REST API as a single item signified by Boolean values of true. The type will be set to string, and for security purposes, I'll implement the sanity callback function internally provided by WordPress called WP strip all tags. This ensures that the string entered into the custom field undergoes proper sanitization when saving the custom post type. So I'll register all of the rest of the meta that I need for all of my other custom fields, including reviews, location, costs, guests, bedrooms, and bathrooms. And that concludes all of my custom fields. So I've set up my custom post type and all the custom fields I need for the next step. Now these files are instrumental in defining the structure for setting up a dynamic data-driven website using a block theme approach. So moving on to the template files, it's all quite straightforward. I've arranged the blocks and laid out the page in the block editor. When it comes to the template files in my theme, I've directly accessed the options in the block editor, chosen the code view, and copied the code from the block editor, pasted it into my local editor, and tidied up the formatting a little. I find this approach much cleaner and easier to work with than dealing with the code directly in the block editor, where there is zero visual syntax to work with. And I've done this for both the archive villa template and the single villa template. Next, let's start with the archive page and adding or binding the custom metadata is fairly simple. So we locate where we want the data to appear. In this case, I'll be adding the custom meta to a paragraph block as this is where the block binding API will be working its magic. Now this involves defining an object in the comment, specifying the metadata bindings to the content source of core forward slash post meta and arguments setting the key to the key of your custom meta field. So where this key is placed in the template will serve as a corresponding reference to the custom field in the post, essentially binding the value from the post and inserting it into the paragraph tag currently empty functioning as a placeholder. So I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my custom metadata bindings to a couple more paragraph blocks wherever I want to place them. In my case, I'll reference a couple more for location and costs. Finally, all that's left to do is to reference the same block binding key to a custom field in the post content. So I'll start by by adding a custom field for, for the vacation villas rated and assign a value. So when you first initiate these, if you haven't added any custom fields referencing keys to any posts, you'll need to copy and paste them or type them in manually. However, once you've added them to a post once, they'll automatically be populated in other posts, making it easier to add custom fields to posts later on. After saving the changes and refreshing the page, you'll notice the data is now pulled in dynamically from the custom metadata. Now, all I need to do is to go into all of my posts and add the values for all of the metadata that I've registered. Once I've done that, I can also bind those custom fields into my single villa template. So with the power of editing and as swift as a hair with the agility of a gazelle, I'll go ahead and do that. Now I'll move on to setting up the single post. And again, I've copied the code from the site editor, made adjustments to incorporate the metadata. As if like magic, with the power of editing, voila, we have everything set up. And again, after saving the changes, you can view the post and see that all the metadata is now properly incorporated. And as you can see, it works pretty well. I mean, it could use some polishing up in terms of styling, but this really demonstrates the power of the upcoming block binding API. So in conclusion, I believe custom post meta remains a valuable asset for development within WordPress, enabling the creation of highly data-driven websites. While it may not be the most user-friendly process at the moment, it certainly bridges the gap between classic theme and block theme development, making it a worthwhile investment in my opinion. There are some pros and cons to consider. On the pro side, the flexibility in data distribution Distribution across post types and pages will make it easier to create block-based dynamic data-driven content. To a certain degree, it may even enable those legacy themes to transition relatively pain-free. However, some of the cons include its limited native support at the moment, which currently only supports paragraphs, headings, images, and buttons. But even this is a pretty flexible stage presence, in my opinion. I'm absolutely confident that there will be some big improvements in the coming releases of WordPress, and I'm pretty excited about that, especially in this new era of block theme development. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for the future, and I'm going to be looking forward to what's around the corner. So that's about all I've got for now. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video.